Well, well. Man, oh man. We're pregnant. And we move back to Texas. Let's talk about it. So many people get weirded out when I say, like, we're pregnant. And the thing is, yes, my wife is carrying a child. But anyone that has had a partner or a spouse or a mate who's been pregnant knows that when they're pregnant, everybody's pregnant. When she craves food, I don't necessarily crave the food, but it's my responsibility to get that food uh, as she becomes more immobile. It's my responsibility to be more mobile. And as we decide and make decisions for our family, um, we can't decide it without considering this life that is about to join us in some months. And so I always say we're pregnant because she's uh, my love, my partner, and it's the life that I, I partnered with her to create. Uh, and so that's for all the people that are like, oh my God, she's pregnant. You need to say her, she, she is. And I respect that and I respect her, uh, but also we are, and we're excited and we're, we are bursting at the seams. And we moved back to Houston and it was a, a really hard decision. It was a quick decision, but it was a really hard decision because it was the middle of the pandemic. It was the, uh, the Saturday before Mother's Day and that. Friday night, I was reading an article about wealth building and about millionaires in LA. And I believe the number was something like 40% of millennial millionaires live in California. And then it went on to discuss, uh, this article went on to discuss about how most millionaires in LA uh, made their millions, of course, in real estate. And with that being said, it said that they found real estate in other states, most likely the Midwest. And so I started looking at properties to purchase um, in like uh, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, in, you know, random places in the Midwest. And then I was on uh, the app and I was like, man, I wonder what's in Houston. Because, you know, my wife and I are born and raised here. Our families are here. And um, I started looking at Houston. And I saw some beautiful things. Let me let me frame it for you. So we were looking at homes to buy in L.A. back in October of 2019. And a starter home, and let's just say 1,500 square feet, three bed, uh, at least two and a half bath in Los Angeles is... A, a good decent start is at least you know five hundred thousand uh, dollars starting to find something that you could live in and not feel like it's a fixer upper every door you open every you know stone you turn uh, at least seven hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to be real comfortable probably about one point two million dollars and um, we were searching, we were hunting. We were like, ah, let's find a house. We found a house with a lot of compromises. In it. it was brand new, but it also didn't have a backyard. It was brand new, but it was one of those three-story things where the kitchen's on the second floor, so you gotta carry groceries upstairs, which I loathe. And um, we, we went through the pre-approval uh, process and they were like, hey, we're sorry we can't approve you for the $800,000. We can only approve you for like $475,000. And we were like, man, okay. And quickly I was like, hey, we can't let that get us down because $475,000 anywhere outside of California or New York uh, is not anything to be embarrassed or ashamed of or feel um, discredited by. And so, you know, I started looking at it. I'm like, man, I don't want to spend anything over $200,000. I just want to kind of get my feet wet, find a starter home, something that's an investment property. And I'm looking, you know, at these homes and I finally come to Texas. And I'm like, well, what if it's not an investment property? What if it's something for us? Because my wife has had raised concerns early in the pandemic about wanting to visit Houston and all this stuff. And it, we got into a couple of arguments about it. And there were there were some friends of our house one day when we were we were arguing about uh and i love when our friends are around and we get into like a tiff because 
we, we, we aren't one of those. We don't pretend like if if I'm upset with her, she's upset with me. We're going to express it in that moment, whether people are around or not. And then we're going to deal with it, not not deal with it like, oh, my God, let's talk about it and air our business in front of everybody. But um, d- d- deal with it in, 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 a, in a manner that that we deal with stuff. And the way we deal with stuff is not one of those things that we're embarrassed by or we hide because I'm not priding myself on how well we do it because we bicker. Uh, but I am I am priding myself on the fact that we do hear each other out and we, we are able to share uh, varied opinions. And her opinion was we should leave and go back to Houston. And I was like, no, no, I, I've, I've come to L.A. I've spent two hundred thirty thousand dollars to go to USC. I'm not about to look like a, a cop out or or a failure by going home, I need people to know I live in LA. I need people that want to do work with me to know where to find me, you know? And if I go back to Houston, it looks a certain way to people in Houston. And and now what did I come back for? And all those things go through your head because it's, it's, it's true. Like if you don't go away and like kill something and become super victorious and you come back, it looks different. Jesus shows us this a number of times. Um, pl- plenty of, of, of other stories show us that as well, but uh, I had to shout out Jesus. You got to go away, become a hero, then come back and then you're lauded and celebrated and people respect you all of a sudden. And you're also getting all these offers and all that jazz. And I was like, no, we can't go back. And I started looking at these houses on the app two weeks later, that Friday before Mother's Day. And I was like, I had moved back to Houston for this. And so at like 3 a.m., you know, when you're when you're texting your person and you're laying next to them, uh, but it's 3 a.m. So I can't wake her up to talk to her. But. I want to say stuff, so I'm shooting these texts of these links of these houses to her. I'm like, hey, I'd go back to Texas for any of these. You know, 2,000 square foot, uh, four bed, three bath, an acre of land for $189,000. You know, I'd move back for that. Brand new build built in, you know, 2017, whatever. I'd go back for that. And she woke up the next morning and she's like, okay. And we get online, we find some more and we're like, oh crap, we're about to, we're about to do this. But, you know, a few hours later, we, we call my sister and her fiance and we tell them what we're thinking. And then we're like, we're hopping in the car in five days. We're coming down there. And we drove down to Houston days after, um, we decided that we'd move back. We pack up my SUV, my Ford Explorer, and which I just paid off in March, by the way. I bought it uh, right before every now I got engaged. It's paid off now, thank you so much. Um, Dave Ramsey would be proud. Um, we packed up all of my low stuff. My son, Michael Logan, he's, he's one and a half years old. We pack up all his stuff. We load my truck down because we're like, we're, we're driving to Texas and he's not coming back to LA because we're gonna dump him in Texas on his grandparents and we're going to come back to LA together to pack up our apartment. We do that, we drive to Texas um, and it's the pandemic. And so restrooms are closed for the most part, because businesses are closed and it's only curbside stuff. So my pregnant wife with her bladder and a child sitting on it is having a hard time. And I'm like, oh crap, we can't, you can't come back with me. So my sister's fiance proposes to her uh, a couple of weeks after that. I'm like, hey bro, welcome to the family. You're going back to LA with me and we're about to pack up my apartment. <laughs> I didn't say it like that, I love Aaron. Um, but yeah, so we, we drive back together. And uh, friends come come over to help us pack. And, and without him and friends helping us, it would have been impossible for me to do by myself. But Ebony could, I wasn't about to put my wife on a flight to endanger her in a pandemic. And I was not about to put her back on the road so that she's uncomfortable uh, in this drive. But I had to, so I rented a car, we drove back, we packed up. The decision is to drive my car, my wife's car back. We we get movers and all this stuff. It gets more expensive than I expect, but we've we've told our landlord and all that stuff that we're we're leaving L.A. We're we're gone, and um, man, 
Uh, it's been about a month and we're in Houston. We got a place. Um, shout out to my cousins, Jared and Deidre Ewing and Ewing Living uh, for being our realtors and helping us find a place in such a timely fashion. And we, we found the place we wanted. We wanted something that was no more than 30 minutes from either one of our parents. We wanted something where I could have an office space that I'm not anywhere near started decorating. I just literally threw some stuff up just to record it so I didn't look ratchet. Um, but yeah, we're close to our parents. We've got uh, four beds, two and a half bath, gated driveway, front yard, backyard. Uh, no neighbor behind us. Detached garage, wood floors throughout, fireplace, huge walk-in closet in the master. Uh, and uh, it's about 2,700 square feet. And just for, and I'm saying all that to say I was in LA, we were living in a two bedroom apartment that was a thousand square feet, two bed, two bath, four story garage with 40 other people. And we were paying $2,200 a month just for rent there. And um, we were going to buy down here, but because of how fast we were moving, we decided to go ahead and rent. And so literally we are renting for $400 less than we were paying in LA for all of this, almost three times the space for $400 less. So it was an economic move. I don't know how this will affect my career. I only can expect growth like coronavirus happening. It feels like the floor, you know? Uh, but but I, I made a move for my family. And, and my friend, uh, Aaron Lindsay, um, I have to shout Aaron out because Aaron said to me the thing that gave me peace, which was when you make a move for your family, God has no choice but to bless it. And so I made a move for my family, for my wife, for my two children now. And that's that's what mattered. Um, the other person I want to credit is Emily Best. Emily Best is the founder and CEO of Seed and Spark, which is a fundraising uh, platform for filmmakers, indie filmmakers. And she tweeted uh, one day that her and her husband and their kids were moving up to the Bay Area because she can't manage life in a pandemic with toddlers and stuff. And I'm like, wait, what about LA? You gotta live in LA, LA. And she tweeted me back and she said, what these last few weeks have proven is that location's a myth. And, and she tweeted that on Thursday, Friday, I was looking for houses. That gave me peace. By that following week, um, that Thursday, we, we sat down with with our friend Aaron and um, and his lovely wife, Adrian, two of our best friends. Um, and Aaron said, Vincent, when you make a choice for your family, God has no, no choice but to bless it. And so it's on him now. It's on God. I, I made a move for my family. I didn't say, oh, we got to go to Atlanta. Oh, we have to go to South Carolina. We got to go to Austin. We have to go to Toronto. I didn't pull the film card. I want to be a whatever. I made I made the move that was going to give us the most peace. Peace in our marriage. Peace in our home. Peace in our parenting. Peace in our finances. Peace in our spirits. We were so stressed at the beginning of the pandemic. Still stressed now, but it's not the same kind of stress. The stress now is like, oh my God, we're about to have kids. The stress at the beginning of the pandemic was I'm on Zoom calls and I've got a one and a half year old running around in this box and I have to, I'm trying to be productive, but he wants to go outside and he needs a backyard, he needs a place to run. His grandparents have homes that they own where they can wild out. And our, our, our siblings are here in Houston, our groups are here. So it was no brainer for us. So that's what brought us to Houston. Um, just wanted to share that. I, I don't know how long I talked. This is way longer than I played on talking or whatever. Hopefully the YouTube algorithm likes it though. But yeah, uh, buy their shirt. Everything's going to be all right. PJ Morton, just shout out my boy. He, I bought the shirt. Uh, but I wanted to shout out my boy Pete. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's where we are now. We're here. So if you're in Houston, if you're in Texas, let's collaborate. You know, I'm, I'm here, uh, I'm ready to work. 
Uh, if you're nationwide, I, I'm still, I still can fly. I wear masks. I, I'm not afraid to fly. Um, I still can work because I've got bills and I've got debt and I've got family and um, we've got things to do. So I just want to share all that so that we're not running around forgetting that we haven't told people and you know uh, all that jazz. Everybody knows now we're pregnant and we move back to Houston. All my LA people know it now. If you feel like a two hundred dollar flight and two hundred dollars a night in a hotel is too much for you to, you know, call me to put me in the project, then so be. It. Wait, what's happening? Yo, yo, has this been happening the whole time? Has has this been happening the whole? What's that? I hadn't heard that noise. Yeah, what the word? I gotta do this all over again. I have to do this all over again because crap. I'm out. I'm, I'm back for a split second because I think I was peeking or some kind of random static started in the last part of, excuse this, my in-ears for a second, but I just want to make sure you can, you can hear me. Um, I guess I could go behind my back and go like Tom Brokaw style, but, uh, Hey babe. Yeah. Uh, I, I think so. My audio just fried out on me. So I don't know how long that was messed up. So I'm just closing out again now that they can hear me. Um, I think I said something about my shirt. Did you guys hear me say buy it from PJ Morton? That's my boy. Um, yada yada. I don't know what I, I don't know where I was. I don't know where this messed up. I won't know until the edit. So whatever you didn't find out from this video, I'll put in another one. I'm not saying it all over again. I gotta unpack boxes. <sighs> right? Right. Good job. Oh uh, well, a job. It wasn't necessarily. I tried to do our whole while we moved to LA and get pregnant and all this stuff. You said we're pregnant? Yeah, I'm not posting it until after we post the video for Shamika. Oh. I mean, we're about to post it in like two weeks. Well, what if no one watches it? Then they won't know. So we just, so I'm just saying then. But if they don't know, then they don't need to know. If they don't watch it, then they don't deserve to know. But I'm going to put it on my page and I'm probably going to highlight the fact that you're pregnant. I love you. I love you too, babe. You know, help me make the carbonara? Mm -mm. It's fun. We can cook together. Babe, I got other stuff to do. Like what? Um, plugging up Apple TVs and stuff. <laughs> You're horrible. I got other important things to do. That's the important or just other? I thought I just said I had other things to do. Whatever. It's on camera. All right, I'm done for real.